We're going to do the handover video on the Leica Ecovit 409. We're going to start from the outside and then we're going to go on to the inside. Firstly, your fill up point is just here on your passenger side. Diesel into there. <clears throat> when opening the door, you'll notice that your tyre pressures are just on the door sill there. And then your bonnet release catch is just on the passenger side, which is just there. The bonnet catch is just in line with the Leica logo, just underneath here. Underneath the bonnet, the main things that you need to know is if you're ever needing to jump start, start the vehicle. If that's the case, your negative goes onto this point here, and your positive goes underneath this cap here. To get this up, all you need is your key, just to lever up the cap so you can attach the positive point just like so leave that up you can see that that's where your positive connects onto they're the main things as I say that you need to know but just to point out a couple more things to you you've got your engine oil which is there with your dipstick which is just there you then got your brake disc fluid which is there your engine coolant power steering fluid and then finally your washer fluid which is in there moving around the vehicle you notice you've got your awning on the side this is just a simple wind down awning all you need to do is connect the pole onto the, uh, onto the clip there and simply wind out wind out to a position where you can reach it and then simply drop the legs out from the bottom side which are attached in the actual uh, awning itself let it take the weight of the awning and then simply walk it out wind it walk it out a little wind it when it gets slack just pull out uh, pull back a little bit just to remain tension in the actual canvas your awning of course make sure that you don't use that on a windy day today it's not too bad so you you'd be you'd, you'd be all right to use it but as i say don't use it on a windy day as you can imagine it's a massive sail on the side of the van so it could potentially break the arm moving down you notice you've got your step into your habitation area just quickly whilst i'm here you can see that you've got a pipe underneath here that's for your fresh water tank you've got drain down points throughout the vehicle you've got your frost protection valve uh, which is your boiler drain down you've then got your fresh water drain down and your waste water your fresh water is here and that's done from the inside of the vehicle which i'll show you when we get into the inside next you've got your fridge vents on this side what I say with fridge vents is, as you can imagine, this is where um, the fridge is pulling all the air from. If it's a hot day and the sun's beating down on this side of the van, just turn around the van, it'll help the fridge work more efficiently. Next, you've got your toilet cassette, which is just into, the, uh, into there. Once open up, you can see the cassette. Uh, when, when removing this, the main thing that you need to make sure is that the blade on the toilet is closed. If the blade on the toilet is open and you pull this and force it out, you'll snap the arm so and what I say is a rule of thumb is if it feels like it's being forced and this goes for everything in the vehicle if it feels like it's being forced you're probably doing something wrong so make sure you you, you sh shut that blade which you should every after every use um, and then simply remove slide out and then you can remove it when emptying this all you've got to do is pull this out undo the cap slide out and you'll notice that button on the back there press that button and tip the cassette that'll allow everything contained in here all the waste to to flow out in one steady flow um, once you've done that put a bit of water in shake it about left to right um, and then you're uh, you're good to go you can also put your blue fluid in here and also your toilet sachets you'll also notice on the top you've also got that like little switch arm um, that is where the blade makes contact with when opening and closing the cassette. Don't do anything with that, make sure that that stays in that position so we can slide in. Just like so. Moving across, you've also got in here your hookup cable. That's where that lives and connects in. So it allows you to get mains to the vehicle. And then finally, your garage. With the garage open, you can see that you've got all this access point. We've got your carpets in the back along with a couple other bits as well. Moving along the back, you'll notice that you've got your reversing camera, which is just up at the top there. And now we're on the other side, you can see another access point into the garage. Opening this garage door, you'll notice that you've got this white uh, circular dish here. 
This is an access point to your um, frost protection valve. Simply turn, and then it'll come off. Once this is off, you'll notice that you've got this black box here with a diamond. As I say, this is your frost protection valve. Um, and in essence, this is a fail safe for the vehicle. So what this will do is if it drops to a certain temperature, this will automatically trip and the van will be drained of water. So at the moment it's closed. You know it's closed because your diamond is in this position with the black nib down on there. And you'll also notice there's no blue tab coming out here. If I open this, you'll hear the water cup trickling out. You'll see that black nib which is just up on the... Um, on the actual uh, diamond itself and it's a bit difficult to see but you, there is a blue tab that has popped out on this side there there you are to close this simply reverse the, the operation so turn that and then all you've got to do is push this tab in like so that'll close the system a lot of people forget about this frost protection valve so make sure it's on your checklist and what I say with this is, if you've had your vehicle and your, you know, it's in habitat, uh, sorry, it's uh, it's in hibernation mode. So you've gone to, um, you've stored the vehicle, and you've not used it for a while, and you've drained this system down automatically. What will happen is you'll come to this and you'll try and close it. So you'll turn the, um, you'll turn this diamond, and you'll go to push in the button. So the the diamond will close. However, you'll go to push in this button, and it'll keep on pinging out. The reason for that is it's got some um, solution in this box which re reacts to temperature. If that's the case, you need to go on into your vehicle, turn the heating on, hence why these pipes are here, to get this area hot. Once this area is warm, you can then push this in and retain water in the, in the vehicle. Uh, and it does that as, as, a safe fail sa uh, for, uh, as a fail safe. Um, now, with in regards to this, uh, you can't your heating system. You, you're fine to run that without water, so don't worry about damaging the vehicle. Pop that back on, and you're good to go. Next, moving along, you've got your external shower point, which is external to the vehicle. There, you've got your trimmy vent, which is just there. This in essence is your chimney um, and your flue, so don't hang anything on there, it does get hot, so just be careful of that. Moving along, you've got your gas locker which is in here, and then finally, your fresh water tank. This is where you fill up. All you've got to do with this is stick your key in, turn it, undo, post pipe in, and then fill up the tank. You know it's full, because when it comes out, <laughs> it's full. Finally, your final drain down point which is external to the vehicle, is down here. This drain down point is for your wastewater. You'll notice that you've got this pipe which is just coming out here. So you've got your fresh water which is on the other side which is which you uh, empty from the inside of the vehicle. You've got your fresh protection valve which is in the back of the vehicle. And then you've finally got this, which is your wastewater. To empty this system all you've got to do is you just pull this bung out, remove this, just like so, and then that'll empty all the water out. That concludes the outside of the vehicle, we'll move on to the inside. Just coming off that, um, the drain down points, what I say is when you are travelling off site and you're going home, you can leave all your drain down points open, because uh, the vibrations of the vehicle will then make sure that all the water gets out of the system. Uh, and it's just water, so it's not going to harm anything. Next, moving in the vehicle. You'll notice just above your habitation door, you've got your control panel. On your control panel, you've got your main isolator switch, which is your master switch. This is just a touch uh, screen panel, and it'll activate, just like so. And that'll activate all your system. Opposite from that, you've got your lights, which will turn all your lights on in the van. Above that, you've got your door light, which is just on the outside. Above that, you've then got your pump which you can click and that'll activate the pump. Now, what I what I always say with your pump is make sure that you don't run it with, without water in the system as it'll burn out the pump. What you need to do is once you've filled up, come to this, click this button to activate the pump. Then go to all of your taps, including your shower, turn it to hot and turn it on. What that's gonna do is it's gonna prime your system. So it's gonna drag water through the fresh water tank, through your pipes, 
through the boiler system when you're doing it through hot and it'll spurt out once it's running steadily you know that you prime your system once you've done this on the hot you need to do it on the cool so flick it over to cool and do the exact same once it's running steadily and you've primed it all you've got to do is leave the pump on because each of these taps are on isolation switches so it'll only activate the pump when you need it so you can leave the pump on <clears throat> just above from that you got your aux what that means is you can activate anything which is 12 volt in the in the vehicle so all your 12 volt connection points that'll be activated next you then got your vehicle temperature which is internal to the vehicle and also external temperature which you can just flick through there below that you've got your battery level if i click that it'll show you your voltage for your habitation area which you can see is the back of a motorhome just like that. You've then got your here your uh, fresh water tank. If I click that, which one's clicked will show you percentage there. Turn the system off to shut everything down. Next to that, you do have your Truma control panel. What this is, it's for the heater. So it's your uh, heater for your uh, hot water and also your space heater for the vehicle's temperature. So I'm going to click this button. Everything below the line is what you want to select. You can see that this is flashing. As I turn the dial, each icon flashes. This, in essence, is your selector. Press down to select. So firstly, you've got your habitation um, temperature. This will go all the way up to 30 degrees. And as I say, I can do that just by sliding the dial. Click in just to activate that. You've then got your back button here just to knock off that. Next along, you've got your um, uh, water temperature. You've got eco, hot, hot or boost. Eco is approximately 40 degrees. Hot is 70 degrees. And boost is a is uh, in essence concentrates on heating the water so it'll stop concentrating on heating the um, the vehicle itself and instead focus on heating hot water next along you've got your fuel so you can see if i click that you've got gas mix one mix two el1 and el2 so what you've got you've got gas that that's what you're going to be using when you're wild camping mix one is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric Mix 2 is a gas is gas and a mixture of 2 kilowatt electric. You've then got EL1 and EL2. EL1 is 1 kilowatt electric, two, EL2 is 2 kilowatt electric. Finally, you've got your, uh, your fan temperature, which once I've selected the vehicle's temperature, you can flick between um, eco, hot and boost, which will be the exact same as what, um, what happens with the water. So if you want to... Uh, if you want to for example, concentrate on heating the vehicle, just flick it over to boost. You'll notice at the moment I've not got anything selected, so when I go to select that fan, I've just got the option of venting. Finally, just going down to the bottom, you've got your timer, so you can set a timer of when you want it to come on. Your clock. And then finally, your, uh, your up settings. The main thing that you need to know in your settings is the reset button. If I, if I scroll all the way to the back, uh, to the bottom, you've got your reset button, which is just here. Uh, which, again, if you just click that, it'll reset the system. The reason you need that is if, for example, you've selected a fuel, uh, sorry, selected to heat your vehicle using a fuel that you haven't got. So, for example, if you've not got any gas to the vehicle and you select a few, um, if you, you know, turn your heater on and select gas, You'll then get an error code because obviously you've not got anything feeding that. It'll then flash. You'll get an error code. You need to then once you've once you've got that, go to that system and reset it. And that is your Truma system. To turn on and off, all you've got to do is hold, and that'll then turn off. Just like so. Just moving down to this area. Just before moving on, as I was saying outside with your fresh water tank, um, your fresh water tank is uh, drain down point is internal to the vehicle. To do that, you can see that you've got this this plastic pull here. Simply pull that up, and that'll drain the entire water tank. In there, you've also got a bit of storage as well, and there you some of your fuses as well, which are just there. You can also notice you've got your step. 
button which is just there and that will activate your step. Next you've then got your kitchen space. So underneath here you, you've got some storage. All the way through. You've then got your hob which is just there. And an extractor fan which is just there as well. We've spoken about priming your system so you're fine with that. And then just underneath here as well you'll notice there's another little latch that pulls out for some extra worktop space. Which slides out like so. Bit more storage as well underneath here, as you can see. You'll also notice that you've got a tap here, you've got a couple more around the vehicle. They're isolation valves, you don't need to click them, only, uh, only turn them when uh, you are advised to. Whilst I'm in this position, we've obviously spoken about your fresh water tank draining the whole system down. If you, for ex example, wanted to drain the system down to 20 litres, uh, so 20% rather, simply open this cap up. And once you have the cap open, you'll have a little valve in there, turn that, and that'll drain the whole system for 20 litres. Uh, the reason for that is... Uh, for weight distribution and the manufacturer also recommend that if you are traveling with water travel with only 20 liters or 20 percent as i say because of weight distribution and also payload opposite this area you've got your fridge here you've got your freezer up at the top in your fridge which is just down at the bottom there you'll also notice you've got your dometic uh, oven and grill which is just up at the top there When operating the fridge, this is an emetic fridge which is called a three-way fridge. The reason for that is there's three ways to power the fridge. So if I click this on, you'll notice it activates the fridge. You've got quite a few options for this. So you've got your mains, just turn this off. You'll notice that you've got your mains, which is here. You've then got your gas, which is here. And then your 12 volt system. What this is, is your mains is when you're hooked up, you can power the fridge off 230 volts. Uh, then when you're wild camping, you've got gas here, so uh, which will run off the gas. You've then got your 12 volt uh, option, which is just there, which will then, um, a lot of people think that they can run the system, uh, the fridge off your 12 volt system. Uh, when you're wild camping you can't it draws too much power if you're wanting to do that you need to go to uh, you need to select it onto gas uh, but as i say when you're driving it'll then fuel off the actual leisure battery you've then got this a here this a stands for automatic if i, I click that for you so that'll automatically switch to whichever gas or um, or fuel you you have at the time next along you can see that you've got your temperature for your fridge and then finally you've got a reset button if you ever get an error code moving into the back you've got two access points into your uh, bathroom area you've got this door here which when sliding this you can access the bathroom here or you have this option when sliding this you can act access it through this side of the vehicle which gives you a little bit of flexibility You've also got your dividing door, which is just there, along with your shower, which is on this side, so you can divide the space and create a bit of a changing area. Moving into the back, you can see that you've got all your book packs, which are in there, and more storage. And the same again on this side as well. You've also got a sliding point, which allows you access into the garage area, which is just there. And you'll notice that just up here, you can slide out this area using the infill. You can create this into a bed, which is a larger bed. Moving back around to the bathroom area, uh, we've been through obviously, as I say, your um, your priming the system, and we've also talked about your cassette toilet. When I was referencing the blade outside, this is your blade on the toilet. At the moment it's closed, pull forward towards you and that opens. And if you were to look into here, you can see that the cassette would be open. When using this, during use, you need to open the cassette so all the waste drops into the cassette toilet. Once you've done that, then go to your flush. The blue button is the flush. Click that and that'll flush the system. 
once you've done that, you then need to close the blade to ensure that no odours escape. Just quickly on to hit this control panel as well. Your flush, as I say, is this blue button here. That'll only activate when you've got your pump on, so make sure you have. And then you can also see that there's a little, um, a little symbol here. This will then light up red or amber just to indicate what, um, what level and how full your cassette is. Moving back through the vehicle towards the lounge, just quickly, you can see that you, on your windows you've got your, fly uh, your blinds, which are just here, and also your fly screens, and on each of the windows, just by flicking these outwards, you can open the window like so. You've also got the option for venting, which is just like that, just to allow for a little bit of airflow through. Obviously, when travelling, make sure that all these areas are closed, along with your roof lights as well. Moving into the lounge area, you've got your table which slides about and rotates and swings about here, just to allow for a little bit more accessibility. Uh, if you are using this as a bed, all you've got to do is come all under to the table, flick this latch downwards, and then push down on the table, which is telescopic. That'll then slot into this area here, lock it into place, and then using the infill cushion, slot that onto, onto the, uh, into the area, and then you've got a small double bed. Underneath as well, underneath this uh, cushion, is where your water system is, which is your fresh water, uh, which is just into there. Above you've got more points for storage, which are just here, and then moving on to the cab, you can see you've got your reversing camera, which is just there. You'll also notice you've got your curtains which are pull across here and here just to meet into the middle, just to black out the cab. Finally in the lounge area uh, you have your TV. Your TV bracket is concealed underneath here, which by pulling this allows the whole system to drop and slot into place. Pull this down and then simply lock it into place. Once finished, send it up just like so. That concludes the handover video for the Leica Ecovit 409. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.